Welcome to Dos Geek. I'm so excited to do this video. I have a lot of history with Tails, and if you don't know what it is yet, just wait. You're going to absolutely love this project. So I want to start out and say, if you haven't watched my videos on tour up to this point, and you're not familiar with it, you may want to go back and check that out. But Tails and I have a lot of history because me being a part of the Destination Linux network, me doing the 30 days of Linux, all of that stuff spawned from somebody leaving a comment on one of my videos where I was talking about how to make Windows 10 more secure, because back then I wasn't using Linux when I first started this YouTube channel, and they said, hey, have you ever checked out Tails? And from there, the rest is history. You know, I'm a Destination Linux podcast, hardware addicts, all the Linux stuff that I've done all spawned from that one person leaving that comment. So what is Tails? Well, it's an amazing project, but I think the first thing we need to mention is that on their website, they mentioned specifically the testimonial written by Edward Snowden. It says in 2013, when a small team of journalists and I went head to head against the NSA government to reveal the secret system of global mass surveillance, we use Tails Live to communicate. So think about that for a second. So this, when we talked about the anonymous aspect and the more secure way that you can browse with Tor and getting onto the dark web, this takes this to a whole new layer. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video, what Tails is, how you can use it, and why it's such an awesome project that you should definitely consider donating to because they're actually doing a fundraiser right now, which is a perfect time to do this video. So if you have an extra couple coins to throw their way, definitely do so. Let's get into Tails. You're gonna love it, trust me. I feel like I have to start every video when I talk about the dark web or tore out by saying this. Wanting privacy and wanting to be anonymous does not equate to being a criminal. Yes, criminals will utilize these tools sometimes, just like they use the regular internet, just like they use Teams, just like they use a toilet, just like they use a sink. But that in itself does not make those things evil. And in fact, if you look at my video where I talk about how to get websites out there on the Onion Network, I want to reverse the trend. I want as much positive, awesome, brain-filling, family-friendly content as we can out there. And I'm hoping you will watch that video and go create an Onion site to talk about whatever you geek out about, whatever you're passionate about, so we can start reversing that trend because, you know, dark web's got that nefarious thing. But in any case, I wanted to start with that. So Tales in itself is about privacy, about having security in your communications and what you're doing on the internet, something everyone should be allowed to have. This is something that you get, there are laws around for your mail. Your neighbor can't just go and open your mail anytime they want. There are federal laws about that. Why? Privacy, right? I've got bills and personal things coming through the mail. I don't want people to read. Same thing on the internet, even more so today on the internet. Everything comes through our email clients or we're doing it through the web. And that's what Tails kind of provides here. Now, if you look at their website, they say you can temporarily turn your computer into a secure machine you can also stay safe while using the computer of somebody else. So what Tails does is it has amnesia. So it's an operating system that you put onto a USB drive, you plug it into your computer, you boot into it, you do whatever you have to do. It's gonna to connect to the Tor network and I'm gonna show this all to you and do your activities, reset your computer, you plug that same USB in. Let's say you made a couple files, you sent some communications. Once you reboot, that's gone. Now there are some options for persistent storage, which use high levels of encryption and things like that, that you can do if there are files that you want to be persistent or certain programs you want installed persistent. It does have those options. Of course, you start lowering the amount of security and privacy that you have as you enable those features, but they're there. It's amazing. So websites you visited, even in private mode, files that you open, even if you delete them, passwords, even the password manager, all devices and Wi-Fi networks that you use, it doesn't leave traces like you would on any other computer when you're using Tails because it has amnesia. It forgets everything once you reboot. That's the power of Tails. And if you want a quick and easy way to get onto the Tor network, it's got all of that stuff done for you. So not that it's hard to get on Tor, download the Tor browser, or utilize Brave and, and navigate to an Onion website, but this is even kind of the step above. And here we talk about the encrypted persistent storage that's available there. So if you do have things that you want to store on there, uh, maybe it's a project that you're working on, a certain communications that you have to keep a log of for a certain amount of time. You do have that option, which I'll show you. Digital security toolbox. Tails includes a selection of applications to work on sensitive documents and communicate securely as well. 
Tor Browser with uBlock, Thunderbird for encrypted emails, KeePass XC, LibreOffice, OnionShare, all of those things there. Don't leave a trace. Avoid online surveillance and censorship. Such cool, awesome, awesome software. Very easy to get started in. I'm going to show it to you right now inside of a VM. So let's take a look at what Tails actually looks like once you've downloaded it to a USB drive and you've booted into it. Well, I'm not gonna go through how to set up and install Tails because on their website, which I'll have linked below, they have great instructions. It's as simple as downloading an app like Etcher, downloading Tails, burning it onto a USB drive, click a bunch of buttons, next, 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 and you go. Then you reboot your computer and you boot to that USB drive and you'll see this screen here. Now you could do that in Windows, you can do that with a Linux machine, and you can do that with some, not all, Macs. Now Mac has some additional security things where it doesn't allow you to boot to other operating systems that you can turn off in the operating system and all that. But just know for the most part, most computers you can get to boot into Tails. And if your computer doesn't let you boot into Tails, don't use it. The first thing you're going to come across is this welcome to Tails screen. You've got language option, keyboard layout, formats that you can choose along with additional settings. Now for the additional settings, let's say you want to install software, other things then you would go in here and you could set an administrator password. So because it has amnesia and it wants to forget everything, you're going to have to do this every time you reboot if you want administrator privileges here. But just understand that if you're downloading other software and things and you've got administrative passwords, it does lower the security. That's why it's an option. So if you want to set an administrator password, administrator password for the first time, go ahead and set that here under the additional options. You also have the ability to do uh, network connections here, connect directly to Tor network is the default, configure Tor bridge, disable all networking. You have other options like unsafe browser here, allows you to log into a captive portal. Uh, you don't have to worry about any of those if that doesn't make any sense to you. Really, you just need to decide whether you wanna use an admin password or not, and you don't have to set that. So you can just go up here with the defaults if all of this is good for you and click start tails and you're ready to go. So the first thing I do when I get into Tails, and you notice it had a little pop-up, you may have seen it, a notification where it's, it's saying basically that it is running in a virtual machine, it's detected it's running in a virtual machine. The first thing I like to do is just go ahead and open the Tor browser. You can see it says Tor is not ready. It takes up to 30 seconds, a minute, sometimes more depending on your network to establish that initial connection. I notice at least in a VM environment that it goes faster when you go ahead and click start the Tor browser and then wait 30 seconds to a minute and you'll get a message basically telling you that it's got the network set up, everything's ready to go. Because remember, this all has amnesia. So if you're running on Wi-Fi, you're gonna have to go and reconnect to your Wi-Fi network here. It's not gonna save that information for you unless you specifically tell it to. But again, then you're removing some of the security and anonymous and amnesia features that Tails has. So anytime you're adding things in to make it just like a standard operating system, then you're potentially going to lose some of the benefits. So while that's establishing a connection here in the VM, and I'm only showing in a VM because I can record it more easily. Obviously, this is meant to be run on the USB drive, very little system requirements, a USB stick of eight gigabytes or more, semi-decent computer that's less than 10 years old, and you're gonna be good to go utilizing Tails. Now, Tails also has fantastic documentation, so if you get stuck, now typically, I know manuals who wants to use them because they're not always that good, this is definitely not the case here. You have accessibility options for those that need that on here, Talks about the GNOME desktop environment, which you can see this kind of a customized GNOME desktop environment here. If you're familiar with Linux, encryption and privacy options, how to work on sensitive documents and advanced topics here. So now you see this message, Tor is ready. You can now access the internet. So that lets us know we are ready to get on the internet. And if that's one of your sole purposes of coming on here, you can go ahead and open up the Tor browser and start searching either the Onion network or the regular internet. Now just keep in mind, like any of these things, if you start logging into a bunch of accounts, that's gonna make it much easier to find out who you are. And this, I just wanna mention again, is their fundraiser, $5. If everyone could donate that, if you have that available, that would be awesome. They certainly deserve it and it's such an awesome project. So what you see here, if you're familiar with Linux at all, you've got a calculator, you've got where your files are stored. If you're saving any files uh, in these locations, you've got uh, Office, LibreOffice here. So if you want to write some documents, 
uh, take some notes. You've got Audacity, so ability to listen to some music, watch some videos. You have options like the Synaptic Package Manager. Again, you're going to need to have set your admin password before you can use this. And keep in mind, again, this has amnesia. So when you first load this up, now that we've set our admin password at the beginning, it's going to take a while for this to download all of the information and refresh all the different software repositories there. So up to seven minutes. And then you could search for different applications if there's something you wanted like VLC or SM player or some other tool that's available. You could also use the terminal if you're familiar with your basic commands in Debian. So here is where we can configure a persistent volume. What this means is it's gonna create a section on this particular USB drive that will allow us to keep files that every time we reboot, it will keep those files intact. And that includes applications. If we want certain applications to install every time as well, we have that option too, which I'll show you. So the first thing it's going to say is beware. Using persistence has consequences that must be well understood. Can't help you. If you use it wrong, see encrypted persistent page of the Tails documentation to learn more. Choose a passphrase. So do something big here that you'll remember as your passphrase because it's going to keep this is what's going to keep people out if they ever got a hold of this disk and you were keeping persistent files on here. That's what they would have to break in order to get in. So then it gives you an option here. Do we want to keep files stored in the persistent deck directory? Do we want the welcome screen, language, administrator, password, and additional settings uh, to be persistent? Browser bookmarks, network connections, additional software. So if there's particular software, like every time you want VLC to be installed, you can check that there. Printers. Thunderbird, there's certain accounts and things you want set up every time that you boot. Bitcoin client, this definitely has uses in the cryptocurrency world. SSH clients, dot .files, those things. You can click save and then you would restart this service and you'll notice over here will become a persistent volume that will become available. Now I noticed this happens quite a bit and keep in mind you're running through the Tor network, which is a lot slower than your standard internet because of all the proxies and things that it's setting up. So if you get this message, no big deal. You just go through and you can rerun, reload this again. But you see we have some packages that have still showed up even though we got that error message. But I've noticed when I've tried to install things once I've got that, if it doesn't do a full complete update, they may not install correctly. So just keep that in mind. Do a reload. Let it download all of the repositories correctly so you can get all set up. All right, so if we want to restart, we can do that. But I want to take you through some more options like Onion Share. This is a file share service through the Onion Network. You don't have to use Tails to utilize this. But if you have a file that you want to share with somebody, you can set a file up and it'll basically create a secure link for them to be able to get that file securely. Okay, so you can ignore everything I said because... Obviously, it installed fine even though we were getting that error message. So I did have an issue where I was getting that error message and I couldn't install the file because it was missing stuff, but it looks like in some cases you can. So if you get the error message, go ahead and try that application you want. But notice now that we enabled the persistence, it says install only once or install every time. So I'll go ahead and then click install every time. We'll have SM player. So let's go ahead and I'm going to create a file to show you kind of how this amnesia works. We're going to say this is a super secret document that we don't want anyone to read and will self-destruct at reboot. Little Mission Impossible thing here. We'll do file. We're going to save this under our documents and we're going to call it Mission Impossible and hit save. And so we have our little document there. We wanted that document for one time. Maybe we were going to send it and share it through the Onion Share Network, but we want it to go away. So we didn't. We don't have persistence enabled because we didn't reboot, remember here, yet. And we didn't put it in the persistent folder. We just put it in our documents. So if I go to files here, you can see that that document, Mission Impossible, is there. But once I reboot this machine, it's going to go away. Let me show you. Okay, so we're back at our welcome screen. If we remembered our persistent password here, this is how we decrypt so that we could see our files. So we can go ahead and unlock that. If you remember that password, if you can't, then you're in trouble. Your persistent storage is unlocked, but remember we had to reboot and we didn't have anything that we moved into that file. So we're gonna head without any administrative password this time. And then I'm gonna go over to my files 
and we're gonna see if we have anything there. Now you can see Tor is ready. You can now access the internet, boom. And if I go into my documents, that file is gone. But look, there's a new section now called Tor Browser Persistent. And, and we also have persistent here, file structure. So what I wanna go ahead and do is create that document again, just to show you how this works. This is our not so super secret document that I would rather people not read, but it's not the end of the world if they get a copy of it. So I'm gonna do super secret here. And this time though, I'm gonna save it in this persistent folder. Now, if we don't remember our password, this is gonna be encrypted and be gone, but you can see in our persistent and our documents, we have nothing, but in our persistent, we have the super secret document. So it's gonna store and keep that. Same thing we could do with favorites or other things we want when this machine first boots up. And you can see because we chose at that other screen that we wanted this to install every time, it went ahead and installed SM Player right as we initialized this USB because we told it we want it to install every time so you can use SM Player. But be careful with the applications you use because every application you add that hasn't been officially vetted by Tails is potentially introducing additional security risks for you. But now if we do one more reboot here, just to put this point to bed. All right, so here we are back in Tails. If I go to Persistent, you can see our super secret document because again, I unlocked it with the encrypted password at the beginning welcome screen is here. It stays persistent so we can keep the files that we want. Now, isn't Tails just freaking awesome? I love it. It's awesome. They deserve a $5 donation, don't you think? You know who else is awesome? Well, our sponsor, of course. The next thing I want you all to do is go to bitwarden.com slash DLN for the Destination Linux Network. Let them know that we sent you here. This, before they ever became a sponsor, was the password manager that I trusted. You can go back and look at the videos that Michael Tunnell and I did before they ever sponsored Destination Linux Network or this channel specifically here. This is the password manager, completely open source, that I trust, whether you're a business, whether you're an individual, this is the password manager to use here. This company has third-party audits that come in to check their security along with being open source. So anybody can go and look at the source code and make sure there's no loopholes, there's no issues with the code. They're fast, responsive, and for $10 a year, you can get the premium, but you can sign up for free as well. So if you don't have the money right now, that's okay. You can sign up for free. And then when you get some money in, you can give them that $10 a year, a year, for a premium account and it's well worth it. All of the amazing things, the complex passwords, the complex and encrypted notes that you can set up in here, two-factor authentication makes Bitwarden just an awesome, awesome option. Okay, so Tails is awesome. Tails is that privacy and security that got me into Linux in the first place. So if you haven't checked out Tails, go check it out. It's an amazing tool. Like I said, keep it on a chain for USB drive, keep it in your laptop bag. There will always be opportunities where you need some privacy and security and Tails will bring that to you and also an awesome and easy way to get on the Tor network. Until next time, get out there and fill your brains.